So uh, in multifamily, there is a wide range of the sizes and types of deals. And so I'm going to break down that and some different terminology that we use. Real Estate Lab. Chapter three, deal criteria. What's going on, guys? Chapter three here. This is the section where we're going to talk about deal criteria. Uh, what type, what size of deal, what type of market do you want to be in? All that good stuff. So um, to get started, just want to explain a couple things. So uh, in multifamily, there is a wide range of the sizes and types of deals. And so I'm going to break down that and some different terminology that we use. So uh, multifamily technically starts from five units all the way up to, I mean, I'd say it's, it's technically unlimited, right? It can go up to as many apartments as one is willing to build in a certain community. Right? I've seen properties that are 2000 apartments. So, I mean, that is unbelievably massive. You know, that is a, that could be a, a $500 million property. I mean, you know, huge properties. Um, most apartments range from five to 400 units, I would say, is the more typical size for a community. Um, one to four units is technically considered residential. It's not considered uh, multifamily commercial. Um, so uh, we're starting at five. Um, types of properties. So uh, there are two different ways to classify a property that are pretty commonly used in the business, the location and the quality of the asset. Um, so the location, and we use the same scale for both of these. Normally it's A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, uh, A being on location wise, A being a really nice area, great schools, really safe. Um, you know, it's going to be high end, probably lots of new builds going in, lots of construction, uh, high income, high average income in the area, wealthier areas. Uh, B obviously a step down from that. Um, C would be your more, um, middle of the road, working class apartments, you know, maybe a little bit more crime, uh, rents closer to, you know, 800, 900, a thousand, um, all the way down to D, uh, D areas, which would be, um, you know, not safe areas, kind of the hood, right? Not, not places you really want to be in too often, um, places where there's very low income, there's more poverty, uh, not safe areas. That's a D class area. Um, and areas vary. Uh, they could be, you could have an A class area, not too far from a D class area. Take Detroit, for example, right? Detroit has some C and a lot of D areas in the city limits of Detroit, but you go just outside the city and about two miles away uh, from the city limits of Detroit, you could be in an A, a area in a city like Royal Oak. So um, it just kind of depends where you're at. Uh, they could be very close to each other. You just really need to understand where you're investing, what types of areas you're investing in, where you want to invest. So location-wise, personally, I only invest in A and B areas. I do not do C anymore, and I definitely don't do D. Uh, some people do specialize in D areas, and they do maybe a lot of Section 8 type of rentals, um, government housing. Um, I, I just personally choose not to invest in those areas. I like to invest in areas that I feel comfortable going to and spending time at the properties and areas where I could really level up the, um, the, the quality of a property and, and bump those rents well north, north of a thousand. So that's the location. Um, property itself, we use the same thing, A, B, C, and D. A, an A property would be a brand new property. I'd say something that was built within the last seven to 10 years at the latest. Uh, it's, um, newer, it's good quality, higher rents, um, amenities, uh, a B property would be somewhere in between, you know, built in the 90s or early 2000s. Um, it would be a property that is uh, probably rents are in the, you know, 1000 to 1500 a month range. Um, a B class property, uh, you know, it could be an older property that was updated uh, as well. Um, you know, normally B properties will have like granite countertops, newer cabinets, nicer flooring, fixtures, stuff like that. Um, nothing custom though. It's all still like pretty standard stuff. Um, C class are your typical <clears throat> working class apartments, uh, rents between, you know, 700 to 1100, I would say is a pretty good range. Um, these are more 70, 60s, 70s, 80s build 
properties, a little bit more uh, beat up, um, maybe in need of some renovation. Um, and then D class properties are, uh, there's no specific age, right? Obviously older properties, you're not going to have a D class property built in the nineties. Um, normally it'd be something like the forties, fifties, sixties, could even be seventies if it's in really bad shape. Um, it kind of takes in the condition and the age into account. Um, and so, uh, D properties, I really avoid at most costs unless there is a D quality property in a A or B quality area, and it's just really poorly taken care of. Um, so first thing I'll, I will say, you want to establish your criteria. Where are you comfortable investing? A, B, C. I've done a lot of C properties. I, I've chosen now to stick more to A and B, right? But it is easier to get into properties, I'd say, in the C, uh, C, pro C location. Um, D locations, I would suggest you avoid unless you are very comfortable in the area you've already invested there and understand it. Um, not worth it, in my opinion. Uh, C class is a great way to start, um, for, for location C and B, um, a, a locations will be a little tougher in the beginning, uh, just because lower cap rates, higher prices, it'll be harder to make sense of the numbers. Um, property class, right? So obviously we've established, established location property class. The best type of properties are where you find a C property in a B market or a C property in an A market or a B property in an A market. Um, or if you can find a D class property in a B class market, right? Unlikely you'll find a D class property in an A market. Normally you don't see that big of a spread. Um, but if you could find a, 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 a C class property in a B class area, that is what we call a win. That is a classic, uh, uh, most likely a value add property. Value add meaning we're able to go in and take this property from a C put money into it to renovate it, bring it up to a B quality. It's in a B area. So, right. So we could bring it, you, you cannot bring a, a, a C property to a quality in a C area, right? Because it's going to be over improved. You're putting, you're going to, you're going to have a nice property in an area where nobody wants to live and pay those rents, right? So you can have an A property in an area, A area. You can have an A property in a B area, but you can't have an A property in a C area and you can't have a B property in a D area. Right. So no, I'd say, I'd say it's, you know, it's, uh, you can't be more than two away, right? It's, it's too much of a, of a dynamic there. So, um, finding a C property in a B area or a B in an A area, those are what I look for. Um, and then, uh, obviously the price has to reflect that you need to get a price that reflects the C quality asset, right? You need to pay a price that, that makes sense for that asset still. And then you can go take it to a quality or B quality and see that increase in value, right? But but the price has to reflect that. So that kind of gives you guys a little breakdown on uh, the sizes and types of apartments. Um, next, we're going to talk about uh, markets, right? We talk about the types of areas, A, B, C, D. Uh, but in terms of markets, uh, I would highly suggest when picking uh, one or two markets in the beginning, you're trying to get started um, buying and focusing on buying apartments, right? You, you need to find an, you need to pick an area. I do not suggest openly looking everywhere. I, I don't, right? I think it's too tough to find contacts in every certain market, whether it's property managers or, um, you know, an attorney in every state or, uh, you know, it just the fact that you'd have to bounce between so many different markets and switch up the contacts that you have in those markets, brokers, this and that, right? It makes it very difficult. You're not able to really get a lay of the land, it's hard to go to all these different markets and put your boots on the ground and like walk through them. So I highly recommend you pick one market, maybe two, one market, maybe two. Uh, and, and one of those markets should be where you live, ideally. Now, if you live in a place like New York or California, and it's very difficult to find investment properties, or, or you're in Illinois, a really un, uh, landlord unfriendly state where the laws are not conducive to being a landlord, um, I would not invest in those areas personally, right? Some people want to, I, I, I personally would not. Um, there are so many other states and markets that have, uh, uh, better landlord, more landlord friendly laws and better markets for investing for uh, better, higher return on investment, right? You're not paying stupid low cap rates, you know, in LA, right? You might as well go to Des Moines, Iowa or Indianapolis or Columbus, Ohio, Right. There's all these other better markets. Um, and so, uh, uh, but I suggest if you're, if you're not in one of those tougher markets, um, 
uh, stick to your backyard. Like you maybe pick two market, one more market, but where you live should be the first area where you're trying to buy because you can quickly drive to see the properties. You can quickly make contacts in that market, meet with them, you know, go grab lunch, grab coffee with a broker, uh, put a face to a name and, um, and build relationships locally. Um, it's much easier to asset manage a property if you're local. You don't have to fly in and, and tour properties when they pop up, right? This is a business where you have to act very quickly. And so unless you have the ability on a dime to take a flight out to Austin, Texas from Michigan, when you're looking at deals, you're going to have a hard time making quick decisions on properties, at least at first, right? Once you're more experienced, you can make decisions maybe without seeing a property. Uh, still don't suggest it. But in the beginning, you got to put your eyes on every property that you're looking at. And so I highly suggest you start where you live so that you can, within a, within a two to three hour driving range, I think would be uh, good. So it doesn't have to be in your city, but if you could drive to it within a couple hours, get there in a day and back, a day trip, um, I suggest that your market be there uh, and maybe pick one more. Once you've picked these markets, um, I, I would say uh, what should also, you should also take into account when looking at these markets are um, job growth, population growth, um, you know, things like, is this a growth market or is it a declining market? Um, you know, there are some markets that are really difficult and you might not want to invest in, um, statistically speaking. Now, at the same rate, I look at a market back like, like Michigan, Detroit. I grew up around Detroit. If you look at the city of Detroit itself, it has a consistent population decrease, uh, which is not good. You don't want to invest in markets like that. So that's the city of Detroit, city limits. But the metro Detroit area is actually not bad. More of a steady population. Um, and I have been wildly successful on properties in Metro Detroit. It's been, it's been a really good area because I know it really well. I grew up there. So I know the streets. I know what cities to invest in, what parts of town. Um, I know the tenant base, like those types of things. But statistically, maybe it's not the greatest market. Austin, Texas, on the other hand, statistically is a phenomenal market. Population growth, uh, the job growth, the income growth, um, all those things uh, lead me to uh, want to invest in Austin. And that's why now I live here. Uh, so, um, but two, two wildly different markets, Austin versus Detroit. You know, one, Detroit's way more stable and steady. Austin is, um, is, uh, is booming. It's, it's incredible. So, um, so I invest in both. It kind of is a, a little bit of a hedge. Now, I, I think it's great, though, to invest in markets that are, you know, like Indianapolis, Columbus, um, you know, Oklahoma City, those, those types of places, Kansas City. There's just a bunch of markets around the country that you can do research on and figure out, hey, what, uh, you know, what market is the right one for you? And I, 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 like I said, again, I suggest you pick your backyard. And if you're going to pick another one, pick one that ideally that you know already. If not, you've got to go spend some time getting to know it. So if you're going to pick a market to invest in that's not your backyard that you don't know, I suggest going out there for if you have the ability to, one to two weeks and hit the town. Rent a car or drive there, um, but have a car and, and drive all over the city. Meet with tons of people. Go meet, go set up a bunch of meetings with brokers, property managers, uh, insurance agents, whoever you can in that market, um, other investors, and just get to know the streets. Get to know what parts of town are good, what parts are bad, uh, because in some cities, you could be right on the other side of a highway and you could have a D area and then on the other side of the highway, you could have an A area. And you won't know that unless you know the market. And so if you're looking on Google Maps and you see a property and it's right near what seems to be a nice area, but it's on the other side of the highway and it could actually be in a C or D area and you're making investment decisions based, based on not really understanding a market, um, you could be making bad decisions. So you need to understand, you need to know uh, what the market looks like. You need to put your boots on the ground, spend some time getting to know it, looking at it, understanding what are the good, the good pockets and the bad pockets. Where is the path of progress? Where is development happening? Uh, where's the growth? Um, where is kind of the more uh, rural areas or the country, right? So just need to understand all that when picking a market. So like I said, I wouldn't pick more than two markets at first and then drill down in those one or two markets Start making that list of contacts. We talked about building your team. Start building your team in each of these cities. Talking, I'd say the first thing is talking to brokers. Then find the more ancillary uh, members of your team. Um, but talk to brokers and start looking at deals. You really will never learn a market until you look at deals. 
uh, by getting them sent to you or talking directly to the seller and then going and driving the deal and then underwriting the deal, which we're going to go over, running, running the numbers, um, and then after that, making offers, right? But you need to understand and know the market to make solid offers. I've made offers on deals where I didn't get it. After, I didn't get the offer accepted, thank goodness. I went and drove the property afterwards um, uh, just to confirm, to see if I could, hey, if I can bring my offer up a little bit or make it work. And then I drove it, and I'm like, oh, man, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't make that work. And honestly, I'm disappointed that I made this offer because I would have probably not followed through on it because I didn't look at it first and I didn't feel confident enough in it. So you need to go um, put your boots on the ground and check out a property. Now, one other thing you can do is you can find a partner who has boots on the ground and who lives in that area, uh, or you can hire someone that lives in that area and say, hey, you know, could I pay you 100 bucks to uh, 100 bucks each time to go do a property tour and take a video of the neighborhood pictures of the property um, and send it over to me. And then and then you can avoid doing a flight. I still think you should go see it for yourself and experience it, um, what a tenant would see. Uh, however, um, that is another good way, or a property manager, right? You could send a manager, property manager out or call them up and say, hey, what is this area like? Should I invest here? Does this make sense? Is this a good property? And they should be able to tell you, at least give you a preliminary feel. So those are my suggestions on picking a market. Uh, do your research statistically, um, go do your research in person and uh, pick a good market and then focus all in on those markets. I know people who are so very, very, very successful and they only buy in one market and they own, you know, hundred, hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate in one market. And it's just because they stayed there and they focused really, really hard over time. You don't need six or seven markets to be successful in this. You just need to be patient, pick a market and then really go all in and become an expert there. Mm -hmm.